Good morning. Good evening. Hello. Thank you for listening. This is a medical cannabis program and I'm going to be talking about medical cannabis stuff. And I respect the law and I hope you respect the law too. Uh, today is an anti-cancer terpenoids discussion. And also there's a bit about some disinfectants um, in virus study with I've been talking a bit about HLDV, hot latent virus disease, and what can, I used to use uh, isopropylene as an example to disinfect, so I thought it was good, and looked into it. I thought, oh, all right, I, I, could, I, my practices can be improved. So I thought I'd share that too. Uh, what else is on the slide? Just looking in front of the slide, I have some job stuff, entrepreneurship, that's, Recreational, I and pharmacological. Right, eh? Very good. Um, so that's what's going to be discussed today. And I'll give it a little bit. This thing about uh, some interesting stuff about Australia, too, of course. A bit of positiveness for once. And of course, there's some negative things, but yeah, there's a good positive thing coming up for Australia. Uh, yeah. All right, 30 seconds I'll give it, so skip forward. If you're re-watching it, wait for the slides to come up. Some interesting news things too. That's um, scary news. Anyway, I won't preempt stuff. It's those shows that give the spoilers at the start of them, all those TV shows now, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Because I want to be excited and wait to watch. Oh, cool. Now it comes up. And that's kind of what I just did then. Gave a bit of a spoiler what's coming up. But I suppose you're not really going to find things out that good. On the TV shows, you visually see all the good bits. They show you the rad bits. <laughs> anyway, um, back to it. All right, start. I'll share screen. So this is today's to get through. It's not a great deal. But starting. Is this. And I thought, wow, isn't this interesting? How times change and how things can evolve. This is school. Look, you're looking at a uh, playground back in the year 1900. And it's. Massive long extension ladders, as dangerous as. Like not even an adult would get up there these days without a harness or anything like that on. It's just it's dangerous and the kids are playing with that in recess at the school break. So it just shows how things can change and evolve for the positive, just like medical cannabis. That's today's stuff. Uh, here's a bit of new stuff. It says... How can I stop my 18-year-old smoking so much weed? This is in the paper. Um, how can I stop them smoking so much? It's excess, so this parent says. And the answer is pretty, I can't remember it, so I'm going to have to scroll down a bit. It's not the scroll button. Ah. For example, moderate alcohol use is less likely to cause problems. Yes, getting drunk. And how unlikely weed is illegal, which means that your son is at risk of prosecution when he buys it. So it's a law issue. But in health-wise, uh, the studies suggest that if it's medically grown, it can be beneficial. But if it's street grown with uneducated folk who put poisonous substances into it, it can be harmful. There's the, that's it. Next, oh, there was some really interesting news. This stuff's full on. <laughs> hey, I'll say good day. This stuff's full on. Hey, good morning to Aaron. Hope you're well, Aaron. He's a fantastic supporter. I, what do they call those people? Advocates. Great advocate for the industry. Well done. Hey, it's Fargus. Hello, Fargus. Nice to see you, mate. From a, a band with him. 
<laughs> okay. For our former band with him. Um, look at this. This is bad. We won't look at this one. Roundup, which is a legal um, herbicide in Australia. Well, they've just gone through the courts in the States and they've been found guilty for causing cancer in a person. So this person took him to court and they were using Roundup in his area and successfully won and Bayer had to pay a humongous amount of money. So yeah, he had a rare form of non-Hodgkinson's lymphoma, lymphoma. But yet Australia are still uh, legally using this. All the councils and all the government, they still use it. I asked um, a bloke the other day, he was in the park, and he said, oh, it's glyphosate. I said, oh, all right, oh. Yeah, that's Roundup. So um, if you have any medical problems around a government established area, you might be able to pass this on to the, um, your legal friends and stop Australia poisoning the whole place. It stays around for so long, it gets into the water table, it's, its half-life is long, so it kills everything. It's, it's, it's very good at killing um, weeds, really, really good, but it stays along and kills other things too. Next, wait, a big pharma medical study now says can, cannabis is causing heart attacks and strokes in people? What? <laughs> See on the front of the, um, that's a good picture actually. Isn't the daily time fake news with all cannabis around it? Actually, I'm gonna have to you'll see that in future. <laughs> but it, so this is where is this? This is in, it's in the states, I think. Sorry, it's in the USA. Just more. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember this. And it had the two the two doctors in here. So I went and wrote to them. This is a couple of weeks ago and no reply. <laughs> so they, what happened, what I guess, this is pretty full on, I shouldn't have said it, but I don't care. What I guess is they got paid heaps of money to go and put these false claims out. And now these journalists and other negative cannabis people like them are running with it. So um, that's how it starts. Doctors get paid lots. I, actually, I'm not going to repeat anything. Next. So this is in the States. This is actually the website is theheart.org. So it's saying on there, they got a newspaper article saying that published now, marijuana use linked to increased risk of heart attack and heart failure. So with this, though, with that doctor, how he's been, those two doctors were put out those two articles and now all these other med medical associations can run with it. It's um, Big Tobacco went through the same thing in the 90s where they, their, they paid their scientists tons and then it was only in the, it lasted for 20 years and then they redid it and they, got under oath saying that they lied. So it's the same thing happening now. So big farmers going through just like the tobacco and they're doing this because as you know, there's this study found, look at this, the study found of 28,000 cannabis users with X um, type two, 20% had an increased chance of having heart failure. Just all these negative things that, you know, I'm not gonna go into the study because the study was biased to start with. So they've just put given out the news. It's just terrible. Positive news in Australia too. Look at that. The Queensland government, they want you to go and do a survey online to answer why cannabis should be allowed in Queensland. So if anyone in Australia can hop on to this getinvolved.queensland.gov.au and look up the, well, anyway, there's the number if you want. <laughs> And help Australians because they've already allowed it in other states so why not Queensland so they just want to know first so 
if they get too many people going to write that negative thing, like um, all these types of folk who hang out, that's where it's going to go. Okay, next I've got my tablet open and I can't see any. Oh, there we go. Dave's rocked up. Hey, you going, Dave? Nice to see you, Dave. <laughs> next is, what's this? Oh, your evaluation. Now, I think we can get up to that. So that's a little bit coming up, so I'll just see what other ones we got up here first. I thought this is relevant because today's a health thing. Another slide from Australia trying to do the right thing. So women are turning to cannabis to treat menopause symptoms, study suggests. So the Cannabis Club Australia, good on them. Because, yeah, there has been good suggestions, uh, good studies, uh, sorry, around that that say that that works. This slide says, cannabis is not only recreational, it has medical applications and has been used to treat such chronic pain, epilepsy and anxiety. It is therapeutic potential, is, its therapeutic potential is being explored by healthcare professionals. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, anyway, what's this? Oh, wow, that looks pretty damn snazzy, doesn't it? It's 200 micrometers in size under the electroscanning microscope. What is it, you reckon? I'll give you a little bit of a hint. No, I won't give you a hint. I'm just going to wait. You can see by today's topic. No, uh, oh, there's your hint. And I saw this on a, I subscribed to a, a micro hunter is his name, and he had this on his one of his slides, and I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting, because that is, um, yeah, that stuff. All right, so it's been long enough, I reckon. So what it is, is I'll be talking about it later. <laughs> no, boo, that's not what you want here. You can, it's fungi germinating. So a spore has landed there and has been under its right favourable conditions and it's just starting to produce its hyphae. So see the round spore there? So it's still pretty sort of roundish. Yeah. Pretty cool. Take care of your endocrine system with CBD. Just a positive thing I thought to put in today. Well, look at that nice looking male flower. And this is pharmacological potential of cannabis. So it's just got a, a cool looking bud in the middle and it's got a few blowout windows like of anti-cancer activities, antimicrobial, anti-seizure, epilepsy like I have, manage of gastrointestinal disorders and neuroprotective properties like Parkinson's disease. And it's a nice little history slide. I love the history slides. They're rad. So this is a history slide from not, uh, 1893. Wow, 130 years ago, where in Central Asia, they used to take 70,000 to 80,000 kilos of hash into India each year because of its medicinal properties. Yes. This is a little funny little bit. Here's a funny for today. Uh, deaths from alcohol. You see up here, everything's just heaps. Deaths from cigarettes, it's the same thing. Death from cannabis. What? Well, man, am I going to start and dig soon? What's going on? <laughs> I thought, wow, how true. And just because the government is so money hungry, they're, um, that's the whole reason why it's not legal to, for everybody to grow on the planet. Here's another cool little snippet. Cannabis and Alzheimer's disease. A study published in the Journal of Neuroscience in 2018 found that mice with Alzheimer's exposed to THC had better memory performance and reduced neuron loss compared to the control group. Medical cannabis is rad. Oh, and here's the cool thing. I pulled up on this. This wasn't in the article, but my topic of this article is... Daily walkthroughs are important. So for those persons that like to automate, like the big man now, he's trying to set up automation in cannabis because they're only growing it for money. They're not growing it for, uh, 
then I didn't know what can, what's it called? One of my connoisseur. Yeah, they're more interested in money. So they're trying to automate it too much, but this just goes to show. Cool thing. Hey, there's a couple of, couple of people. I'll get back to the daily walkthroughs. And I'll say get A to Yes, Fargo Scott it. <laughs> to Green Bright Nico. How you going, Nico? Nice to see you all the way over there, mate. European nation. Pretty cool. There's been some good studies um, to help you in Europe, how they're going forward with all their studies, the uh, the care programs and stuff like that, just above where you are. Pretty rad, mate. Uh, Green Bicycles, nice to see you, buddy. He's a good advocate for medical cannabis. Check him out. Ozzy Jeffro, hey, buddy, you made it. It's Ozzy Jeffro's in the hands. Hey, there's a, a study, uh, Ozzy Jeffro, I'll just get back to that. So I'll get where I was up to. That's right, I was just up to that little bit. Now share again. For those latecomers, this study in Queensland, they need people to write to the government to help out and say why we should legalise cannabis up there in Queensland. Not legalise cannabis, shit. Sorry, drug driving. Why you should be allowed to drug drive with medical cannabis in Queensland. So there's the walkthrough thing. Next, hey, my mountain friend. Hello, buddy. How are you? Uh, thanks for the $5 that support, or $8 in Australia. Uh, $80 gets you a few dozen, 15 private playlists. 150 gets you a 20-minute video call or a novelty gift, like a chart or something I made. 300 bucks is for a weekly call. That's more so for folk going through medical problems and need my educated opinion, or businesses starting up, and I can help in that sense. Now we'll get to the work in cannabis. This is the US website, if anybody's interested, to get jobs over there. They promote it and support it so much. But for those who are like in Australia, you have to entrepreneur in cannabis. And here's some entrepreneurship ideas, not only in Australia, but where it's illegal, like those other places in Europe and etc. You can be an artist. They all need kind of art. So there's those cool digitized online people that can do good stuff, not like myself. <laughs> Here's another one for some birds. Look at that, very nice. Peacocks, there it is in the corner. They made the flowers out of it. Another couple of peacocks. They'd go well with the anthocyanins, wouldn't it? Those colors. Hmm, company starting that. That'd be a nice looking, just throw a few anthocyanin leaves, chink. <laughs> And I like this one because all the drinks, you know, they're all out. They're even sold in Australia now. This is um, a hash rosin drink. Five milligrams THC. But it says on the side hash rosin. So, yeah, don't know if it actually is. But they've gone and put a coffee, organic, 100% organic coffee, with some hash rosin into a can. So it's probably fizzy as well. Energize it. Wow, if I like coffee, that would be good. Otherwise, here's some THC-infused drinks with pet. <laughs> uh, government need help too. So that's what I titled this little thing. Government need help too. Like a law thing. Whoops, too many. Just one. And this is, uh, I don't know, just happiness, joy. Good on them. Can I art? Now we're up to, should we get into this bit? I should maybe just go through a few other slides. This is pretty technical. You want the tech stuff now? No, I'll still keep going through here. So the evaluation, come back to that. Rick Simpson, because this is a, a um, anti-cannabis terpenes. We'll soon update plant investigation. No, I don't want to do that one. Get rid of this one. So the leaf hop. The transmission of the viroids can be on your hands or through your scissors or through other animals or insects. And this is to say that it's on leaf hoppers. So if you see these little tiny leaf hoppers around, they are a good vector of the HLDV virus. 
after they did some tests. There's actually, a, I saw a snippet this morning that said um, HLDV has been, they did a large test on the medical cannabis in Canada and it said that it came back as 25% has been found with it. So in other words, it's been around for so long, people have been growing it under favorable conditions where it doesn't stress out the plant, so it doesn't show its um, viroids. So it just lays latent. But it suggests that it's been around for a, a, a lot longer than people have thought. So there's these protocols now that have got to be done to stop its, stop it. So that would lead good on to the evaluation of disinfectants to prevent the transmission of viruses and viroids in greenhouse production. This study is for tomatoes, but remember back in the day when we couldn't get any information on our um, rad medical cannabis, we had to always go off tomato stuff because it was very similar. So there was 16 disinfectants that were done here that were evaluated for these four viruses. I'll go through those things later. I just want to see how like it is more. Yeah, it's getting better. So the table is of the four viruses. So the four, so reading from the from the top, excuse me, from the disinfectant, and this is for the virus it is. So PEPMV stands for the Pepino mosaic virus. And this is the potato spindle tuber virus. And this is the tomato mosaic virus. And this is tobacco mosaic with the capital and those little. So just they did, that's the four tests that they did on. Now the results. So I can skim through all this stuff. So they had varying results for various things under different conditions. Efficiency. So after they found out that the good one was non, oh, I'll just read to you instead of remembering it, that the successful conclusion. So they reckoned that a mix of 2% Vircon, 10% Clorox or regular bleach, and 20% of non-fat dry milk, so just powdered milk, but it's got to be non-fat. So that's the blend. And then they thought, all right, once we've got this blend, how long can we keep it for? Because things go off, you know, when you start mixing chemicals, stuff goes off. So then they did a test of efficiency. That's I just included that. Selected, yeah, upon storage. So they went and tested it, and they found that at storage, treatments were carried out. Mixing. Results showed that in comparison to that of the freshly prepared solution, the ability to deactivate the virus in storage over 30 was equally effective. Next one, equally effective with Vircon. So it's found that the mixture of those chemicals can be lasted at a long time. To cut a massive long story short, as you can see. What's this, the list of disinfectants and their application rates? Okay, now uh, that's about it for that study. So in other words, I can change my practice. Yep, that'll do. To make a blend of, I don't know about Vericon because it's 2%, so I'll have to source that some, somehow, but definitely regular bleach and non-fat powdered milk. Mix those two in a solution and into a spray bottle and it'll come out real cloudy. And also, I've heard that spraying milk onto plants used to be an old trait for powdery mildew. Okay, next. So I hope that's helped. Oh, I've got the little thing open. No real questions. What's that? So exploring. Actually, let's come back to this stuff. I'll get onto those road slide like slides because they're quick. <laughs> oh. Location of the CB1 receptor in the brain. What's this? Let's just come back to that. I don't want to explain all that. Oh, this is to do with the study of the lemony, the cancer cells. Ah, okay. All right, come back to that. Because it's amazing because it actually worked. It's, it's pretty cool, the results. If you want to watch back at the end, I'll go through it so people can probably skip to the end. 
who's I'll go through the, the terpenes that they've patented to that are effective against different cancers. Amazed, they've had, yeah. I had to put this in because this is just nice IPM. I've gone over a few IPMs in the last few shows that just show different poor practices. So look at that. Everything's done. Breathing at the nose, whatever. I suppose I'd be happy with that anyway, as long as this person wasn't sick. <laughs> but everything's covered, so that's pretty good. You know, that's that's what I'd expect. That's the minimum protection. Here we go. So Fargus, you're right. Look at that. So this is a cannabis leaf covered in powdery mildew at forty-five thousand x zoom. Oh, what does it say? Is anything good? This tool? Oh, no. You already know they're rad. There you go. There's a little snippet of it. Uh, this is just a related thing for today. Um, this is more than one good reason to be hopeful about cannabinoids and cancer. Because from the activations of different receptors in the body, from cannabinoids... They help with various processes and pathways towards cancer. I'm not going to go through them all. Pretty much went through that a few times ago. Resisting cell death, killing cell death, apoptosis, holding them, activation, invasion, metastasis. So a few cool practices, um, processes, sorry, that are outcoming from the cannabinoids. With cancer. So it's really, um, this is one of them. That it goes through, there's a lot of, you know, that point talking about, it goes through like 20 or 30 different mono, monoterpenes, sesquiterpene, and all different other terpenes in that isoprene range. And that's a rad study at the end. These are two things that I do support that are legal in Australia. Yes, both of them. Oh, ACT, oh, and medical cannabis. And mushrooms are fully legal in Australia. Psilocybin I support because that's, really worked well with me these two things that's the end of the slides cool so now we can go on to well rick simpson oil that's the cbd mixed with thc concentrate that really works with cancer rick simpson made it back in the day and he used to say it could eradicate his cancer within a mere 90 days <laughs> But it seems it's from other studies have said that it works with cancer cells to halt them or actually kill them. So you have to work out what the right milligram amount is for your body to handle to get that to happen. But for those with cancer, tell you what, if I had cancer, I'd be blimmin' doing that. There is, that's him. Good on you, mate. You've saved quite a lot of, and it's more so extended a lot of people's lives. And they're finding that, what's this? The outcome. What's she doing? An author. Okay. Um, the nose navigating. That's basically the outcome. Is it just works really well? Um, not from what I tested. I've heard from two people, two two mates in Canada. Mate's wife and his dog and another person's dog had had mega success from this, and they had stopped it. And they go back and test it, and, and oh, it's increasing, it's increasing. They get back on the RSO, and oh, it stopped. Update on plant photo biology and implications for cannabis production. Oh, oh this is not that one. No, I'm not going to talk about this one because this is, I haven't familiarized myself again. I read this a few weeks ago, and to summarize it without boring you, I um, am going to say this for another week. So I'll just remember that one. I'll put that one over here. Just going to cross it off. That one's done. What's this? Investigation how nitrogen nutrition and pruning impacts on CBD and THC concentration and plant biomass. Investigation how nitrogen. Uh, so the, all right. I remember this one. Let's just go through it. So it's, it's saying that what amount of nitrogen should you give and what's the outcome of the cannabinoids from giving a certain amount of nitrogen to summarize it so 
So to test your plants, if you want to do the same thing, you get a nitrogen test kit, NH4 or NO3, or um, total nitrogen, whatever t form of nitrogen you want to test for, and then you get your dry plant leaf material, mix it up, and see what the outcome is. And that's what they've done here. You can see it. I really want to do this at different growth stages just to see what's happening. That's why I was a while ago sourcing some uh, at home available and total nitrogen test kits, oh, as well as the N other NPKs and things. But I stopped doing that. Uh, let's summarize it. So boring is because you're going, what the hell are we looking at? That's right, I reckon that too. CBD total, biomass total. So here is a, yeah, this would be a good is this an example. I think this is the conclusion. Because what happens is your yield goes up. So here's the treatments over here. So the different little dots represent 30 milligrams per mil, right up to four, 500 milligrams per mil from its color change. And then five is the purple one is pruning. Sun edge and non-sun edge, the triangle to if it's a circle. So this one had over here, so we're talking about the yield, biomass. So it had the blue, so that's 500 milligrams per mil. So it's been fed nitrogen right to the end. But what else has happened? It's dropped in CBC, THC, and CBD. So to get the highest amount, it's the lowest amount at the end. So that's what this is really summarizing. And there's the proof there. So if you feed it very little, you get a lot. Yep, that'll do. Which we sort of already knew because of the way that the leaves senesce. If you read your leaves, you can see that they're using all the nitrogen right at the end. And after they go, they show their uh, carotenoids, the yellow, and then it's starting to go and senesce more where it's used up all the energy out of that because the nitrogen energy is a lot higher than the, when you work out kilojoules and then the terpenes, uh, sorry, then the effectiveness of the yellow or carotenoids is xanth, xanthophils is lower. No, that'll do. But the keen rad thing for today is this study of how they work. Terpenoids, certain terpenoids work as anti-cancer agents. It's so and excellent <laughs> so simple summary they've gone and tested a lot of things against cells and anti-cancer things against various amount of terpenes and they tested all of these four classes the mono sesquis dyes and tri triterpenes so the 10 20s 30s and the 40s so a huge amount of class of terpenes that they've gone and, and tested there for this study so the classification, you know, watch a few shows ago if you wanted to learn about classification of them. Um, my terpenes, so this goes right into it now. So this is going to go through and show all of those four terpene classification ranges that individual terpenes in, in them, for instance, thymol, and then it's going to say how well and how efficient and it works with that. But I'm just going to go down, menthol, so all these ones that appear in medical cannabis, and are bought out. So if you've got your D-limonene, I'm not going to read them all because there's heaps, but you want to, it's, that's why post-harvest productions are so important with medical cannabis to retain all these terpenes. So if you open your little jar and it doesn't smell, if you, when you buy it from Australia, that hasn't got these medical properties in it. And you can ask your pharmacist next time to, for them to get an updated um, test of the medicine that they distribute, not just what it was when the grower had harvested, because that's what they go off all the numbers for, in Australia especially, because our medical cannabis, it's, look, yeah, I'm not going to go on about that one anyway. Um, our medical cannabis is here, it's, it sits in customs for a few months, so it loses a lot of its properties. And yeah, anyway, we go into that, it's political. <laughs> but this study is showing all these different terpenes. I think we're up to the, the three range now. Yep, well, we're, we're finished and good. Because this is the conclusion. So the list of some terpenes, terpenoids, because there's, you know, 
the two classif classifications of the terpenes is one, the oids has got the oxygen attached to it. So these are the list of some terpenoids as anti-cancer agents under various phases of clinical trials that they're still doing and have completed. So there's not many here, but they've you can see menthol, D-limonene, and a few other ones that aren't as common. Yeah, it's the best way to summarize those last few. They've done on various different types of cancers. There's heaps of cancers here. So if you've got any person with cancer, you should put them onto this study. They've done sample sizes, if it's been completed or not, what phase of the trial they're in, etc., and all the references. But the next, next one's the best, because it shows the list of patented terpenoids as anti-cancer agents. So these are the ones that they found to work because they patented them. So in China, Russia, Japan, Singapore, India, and one from the States, or one from the Europe. So they found that thymol, menthol, D-limonene, and sesquitween, lactone, B-alamine, and trito triptolide have been patented successfully against oral cancer, cervical cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer, mesothelioma. So if I knew a person who had any of these, I would go and suggest that they would be looking at these substances. If someone has oral cancer, I would say, you have to source thymol and look at this patent number and why and see how much they use and all that sort of stuff. Like, I'm not a doctor, but this is only girl studies. And how cool is that? Didn't have to come back to something as well. Is it being my questions? I don't think so. I better check. Oh, no, I'll just look at this first. Inclusion, exploring, evaluation. Didn't I have to come back to something which went on to that? No. Oh, that was a cool study. Was... Okay. No, then. Still sharing. Oh, okay. That's right. It was, that's right, it was these slides just showing the different pathways and how they acted against through the dermal tissue and what they did in different um, pathways and receptors and things that they worked on. That's what I remember. Yeah, d -limine. Very cool. So yeah, that gets a bit all to the end. Apoptosis is cell death. That's what apoptosis means. So they're all going to lead to that by this pathways of D-limonene if you've got those types of cells. Pretty rad. What else now? Last one, those. Here's the study of the volcano to show the vaporizing material. It's not a study of volcano, it's showing vaporizers studies. So this is a show some vaporizer studies to see what type, how efficient they are, and I suppose how efficient they are <laughs> against with T CHC, CBD, and of inhaling other terpenes and stuff that you've got in with it. So the methods, okay, good. They got dried, probably hopefully medical cannabis procedures, righto. Scrolling down, the essays results are good. Come on, look, there's some charts, yes. Um, it's, okay, that's a time chart. What's this one related to? Absorbent spectrum. H, PLC, so profiles of THC and okay. Oh, okay. Let's get on to some, on some, here we go, this is better. So the percentage of total cannabinoids found in various fractions collected from five vaporized devices. So they tested the Volcano Medic, the Plenty, the Ariser Solo, the Da Vinci, and the Vape or Smoke. This is Danny, mean percentage, okay. Then across the top here, they've got that the device, the area they tested, the THC percentage or the cannabinoid percentage in different classes of cannabinoids, right? I standards, cannabinoids mean plus standard ratio. 
Okay, so it's just basically, then we go to the, down here, you can see the vapor, residue, device parts, and the tubes if they've got, and then the collection of some, and how much was actually uh, emitted from that green leaf material. So the Volcano Medic had 74. The Plenty had 92. The Ariser Solo had 98. Da Vinci, 67. And the Vapor Smoke, 85. That's some interesting numbers. But the one you want is the vapor one because the total doesn't mean because it could be in the parts itself. So the vapor of the vapor smoke was 56. The Da Vinci was 55. The Riser Solo was 83. The Plenty was 67. And the Volcano Meek was 59. So the Volcano, okay, that's pretty low, isn't it? So the Riser Solo from this study suggests that it's the best out of these five for inhaling of vapor. But these te are tested too when they're clean. So if your device, it ages, they all age pretty fast, not age, but they collect resin pretty fast on their parts. And when you continually use them, when you're vaporizing, that vapors get absorbed to the sticky stuff that's already residual stuff in your machines and your devices. So these numbers will change a lot. But as per using it as, you could say, uh, brand new, yeah, this is good. Or if you clean your device regularly, it's also a good excuse to clean it regularly because these numbers will drop quite fast. I'm not going to go in, they're all different, the blends that they've used and the different types of standards. So that's just an overall, actually. Should I really go into, the numbers will change a lot. Standards, cannabis. All right. What's that referring to then? Because there's numbers, they do change a lot. So the vapor amount down here does go down, but it keeps that general type of uh, trend on the bar graph, if you were to say. So you can see that uh, rise of solo, it's still the highest, 73. Da Vinci, sorry, 79 now. No, that's the total. Which is 50, yeah. So the riser solo, the vapor, 67, 67, 64, uh, 21. So you get what you pay for in some machines. That's why it's better to spend a little bit more. And Da Vinci is 37. Okay, very good. So there, the solo, the top three are the top three over here. You know, that's. I think that's explained enough. There's no questions. Percentage of total cannabinoids found in the vapor, the residue, and the device parts of these is a nice little bar graph. It's probably explained a little bit better without those the different types of standards, and then they're trying to mix them in with the standards. So it still has the arrivals of solo still winning. So it does suggest what the above says. Riser Solo, then it's like Volcano Medic is pretty similar to the Plenty. And then it goes down to the Da Vinci and the Vape or Smoke. It's all to do with the Vapor, I suppose. No, you want to know how much it actually stores in the device as well, because then you've got to clean it heaps. So, yeah, the Volcano Medic it has very little, it's got a grill and not many things in it, where the Plenty has like a tube and other things in it. So there's an example of the residue sticking there. So that would be a consideration when you're buying the device. Do you want to clean them out lots? And they're a pain to clean. You've got to use uh, like isopropylene to do it and you've got to use a lot of it because it's hard to get sticky as gum off. Yeah, that's it. Scroll down, it explains things a little bit better. No. Carboxylation, oh, Jesus, that really just happens. Yep, good. Very good. I think that's it. Um, I'm going to stop just in case there's any questions on my other one. Oh, look at all the questions and stuff. My tablet wasn't showing it in that. Oh, mate. Oh, geez. 
Oh, I'm going to have to scroll up a fair bit here. I'm medics there. How you going, I'm medic? Nice to see you, mate. So, Ozzy, aside from the subject of results, have we found or documented any direct results of cannabinoids co found in cancer progression? Ah, that's a pretty good question. Has there any results showing confounding of confound progression? So, I think you're asking is from using cannabinoids or using medical cannabis. Does it enhance can cancer growth? That's what I'm picking up from that. And the only thing I see from all these studies, mate, is to show that how well it works in the opposite. Please write if that's not the way I in interpret your question. And what mechanisms of action? Uh, yeah, okay. I've got a few, quite a few cancer stuff, quite a few different cancer stuff. Aaron just started a new batch of RSO and uh, next few weeks of my personal research on my own skin cancer excellent work mate uh you can there's a place in the act where a while ago oh they were doing some tests on some a sydney sydney university was testing people who grow medical ca cannabis cannabis in general you can send them your stuff and they'd test it for you maybe see if that's still in effect because you might be able to get your rso tested for free Aaron says he's noticed a def definite slowing down or even reduction of his skin cancer. Wicked, mate. I love hearing positive things. Actual physician results are empirical in good numbers. I don't know what empirical means. Don't forget that medicine is a practice of medicine. Don't forget that medicine is a practice of medicine. Yeah, but doctors are taught differently they're not homeopaths or interested in chinese medicine which has herbs in it they're interested in drugs in phy um, phytos sorry in uh, farmers as far as i'm concerned as far as i'm aware not every physician is as good as the next one yeah that's why i've been starting to look into the chinese medicine and the herbals herbal medicine herbologists or whatever not dietitians but other because I was talking to the same thing about my GP and he said the same yeah we wouldn't have a clue they don't do plants so they don't know nothing about terpenes and all that sort of weird stuff yeah I've got three months till I go back to the doctor to show the changes Aaron says wicked mate can't wait to see for you to say to the doctors they'll go what you haven't got it I've got to check my results or we think you, we've given you a false indication at the start they'll probably say <laughs> it was our mistake <laughs> you can go all right well i'm going to sue the app sue the sue you <laughs> anyway um i medic. what says i i medic is a horticulturalist coming from a pathway of an advanced care flight paramedic awesome just reading down here i medic excellent a medical eye medic says, although I'm an excellent example of how cannabinoids affect their mood and psycho potential of injured people. Oh, yeah, mate, this, it's amazing. Guess for support, a sincere, a, a sincere reduction of medication requirements, i.e., neurogenic effects of cannabis for excessive psychological effects. That's really good. You see, medication, because most medications have um, side effects. So by taking all these different pharma medications, they've all got constricting side effects, let alone constipation. My medic says, cannabis has replaced the 13 medications I've been placed on through traditional pathways. Wow. When I used to... When I was living in Canada, I lived there for five years. Um, I was selling to the dispensaries, and I used to ask the old folk there, why are you here? And they'd go, because we can take all these fistful of tablets, or we can use this oil, or we can have this flour, or something like that. And I just, after asking that a couple of times and getting the same answers, I knew that these people hadn't smoked all their life, and 
they were there for the medicinal properties and that's what made me think i've really got to look into this more this is such a magical wonderful free thing that everybody can have access to should have access to freely by growing it themselves absolutely i've been on lots but i've replaced them all through medical cannabis oh mate that's just excellent how cool Aussie Jeffro says, do you have a preferred, oh, do I have a preferred, Aussie Jeffro asked me, do I have a preferred vape? Yes, I definitely do, mate. I've tried heaps. And they've all had negatives that I've found, but I've stuck with a few because the negatives were very low. Uh, I first, in 2013, when I went to Canada, I went to the, um cannabis to call lounge things there and they had the volcanoes there and so i used them i couldn't believe the terpene profile how it had been enhanced so the bong which i was raised on that's must have hidden a lot of things and through the combustion of it it eliminated a lot of terpenes they just burnt off vaporized volatile hit their temperature and they're gone before it can get to me and i thought this is rad so I did change to the vaporizing and then I've gone through a few different devices to see which one suited because the Ariser Solos are pretty cool, but that glass piece, it when you drop it on the floor, it breaks. And if you don't have another one, then what do you do? <laughs> you need to smoke in a few hours' time and you haven't got it. <laughs> so that one was good for that. But until that happened, um, yeah. And the Volcano cut a long story short, is just excellent. Uh, it's replacements of parts is very low. It's maintenance factor is low. It's built well. The price is high and that's a big negative, but it lasts long. I've still got my one from 2013 and I've got a, a Volcano Medic 2 as well to try those the new one out. And the new one, I'd, it's... The Volcano Medic 2, it comes with these little dosing capsules. I'm going to make a video on it soon because it's, um, it is so excellent. If you're under a uh, budget constraints or have like you, you have failure from your grow, like being ACT, you know, we can grow four plants. But if those plants get a disease, then what do we do? So um, being on rations is being hard in the Volcano so from the Volcano Medic 2, it has these little dosing capsules where you can fill it up to the brim and you still get a good rip out of it. You can still blow smoke and stuff and you're not just vaporising air. Because when I blow out and it vaporises air, it psychologically doesn't... Um, I don't like it. <laughs> Even though I might get a spin afterwards, but I just don't enjoy it. So I like to blow a little bit of smoke. So in other words, there's enough green leaf material in there to get a, a bit of smoke out of it. Um, and then for that's for the home, I'll use those. And then for out, I'll use the um, the matchbox was all right, the little tiny matchbox bait, fifty dollar thing. But the I've had the packs. What else is? I've been stuck on Mighty Plus. So the Mighty again by Stalks and Bickle, that works rad. I can put a the dosing capsule amount in, and I get a good cough out of it. So I start at one ninety and go up three every breath until I reach 210 and by then there's nothing blowing out and I've coughed heaps and um, I get quite affected by it where on the Volcano Medic 2 I don't get any much coughing on it so I think the cough must give you a bit more give me a bit more of a spin <laughs> or a bit more of a, an effect but yeah oh I took the glasses off while I was explaining that sorry I wasn't watching the screen just didn't like, just didn't know better earlier. I, I prefer the vape or dab rig at low temperatures, says iMedic. Yes, the dab rigs are cool, but then Australia's got the problem of getting access to the shatter and uh, has ro to rosin and stuff like that. It's not as uh, easily in the North America, easily available. And it's, if you are going to get it, it's expensive. What was they charging like? It was a hundred bucks of okay, so. uh next thank you oh, i appreciate it. oh no worries mate 
I hope it's that's good. Yeah, for, for the bit of extra money, well, when I went to Canada, I knew that the volcano worked so well for me, so I sourced a second-hand one, and that seemed to be all right. Uh, just had to, I think, go on to quite a few different areas and just look for a second Andy. There was even a, yeah, it's about the best. Just because it works well. I needed something to get me to where I want. I was sick of the portable vapes, having it and thinking, I'm just, I'm three quarters there, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to have to have another sesh to try and get to where I want. Where those devices, they get me there in one sesh, straight away, bang, I'm on to the next task. Back to work or doing something that I wouldn't want. <laughs> uh, oh, Iomedic says, hey, oh, is HLDV an actual problem in Australia? Yes, mate. Oh, it will be soon. Or are we just worried about something that may happen? No, it's, it is a worry in Australia uh, because the genetics they've been getting from the States have been rampant with it for longer than what people think. Like in Canada, there was this um, thing I read this morning that said um, they've tested a lot of cannabis, medical cannabis genetics in Canada and found 25% of them has it. That's 25%. So for the last few years, it's been going around in growers there. Breeders have been mixing up, getting new um, cuts in or things in and just mixing with their breeding program and haven't been seeing signs of it. That's because it's been latent. But when you um, express a bit of stress into it, then it shows its head. So I think it's been around for years, mate. And um, a lot of people in Australia would have it and they don't know it. A good, an easy way to know very quickly off bat is if your buds are getting harvested, you've done all the right thing. And if you've only got two fingers wide, one to two fingers wide behind it. So if you put your fingers behind a bud at day 60 or 70, whenever you're going to pick it, and if you only see one or two fingers, you've got a problem and you could potentially have HLDV, but it's been latent. But you should be putting your fingers behind it and be getting four fingers. I've done this for years, indoors and out, and that's the minimum that you should be getting. Well, yeah, so if you've got two, bang, that's a good, because it mightn't show it, but is the problem with that is, is the plant is activating its immune system, so it's putting all the energy that it's been metabolizing into fighting itself and trying to stay alive and reproduce itself. So that's why you don't get much plant growth. And with, it'll, you'll still get a finish. It'll still finish well. You know, you'll still see um, resin all out, or resin on the, just on the perigonal, on the bracts, the female bits, you won't see much on the little sugar leaves or the resin because, it's, again, it's just putting so much energy into trying to stay alive and reproduce itself then into growth and development. So, yes, it's going to be – Was well, I've been dealing with it for um, – I worked out for over a year now. So, um, yeah, I just wonder, yeah. So for those people who are untrained, mate, they would just be thinking, oh, look, my plant's low, low in nitrogen. I remember I showed that um, clip a while ago where there was had heaps of cannabis consultants giving the wrong indication. So it's hard to pick up. You've got to know those. When you clone it, you get the gamosis. You get chlorosis in the leaves, um, your, your blayol size, your bud size at the end. The cannabinoids is only half as much as it should be. So if you, you get these morphogenic expressions in your plant, there's a high chance that you've got it. And you should be taking it to a pathology lab and getting some tissue tested. And it'll come back as a positive HLDV probably. So, yeah, it's, it's just starting to be huge in the States now. They're learning. So people here have still got to even learn about cannabis, mate. <laughs> So um, it, it's, it's got ages to go, <laughs> but it's probably prevalent. What's Aaron say? Oh, he's talking to someone else. Okay. I did not read that. Uh, one minute. Coughing. Oh, coughing forces. Yes. Coughing forces more of your smaller particulate matter to the lower bronchi, bronchi, bronchioles and bronchioles creating more absorption through smaller alveolos. That's why, Iomatic, do you agree holding it in, if you hold your breath, that's just going to absorb more through those pathways and into the bloodstream? So that old myth that um, holding it in, I think it's true. But um, a few people suggest it's not, but I think it is. What do you think? So in other words, if you bump puff it, you go blow it all in, 
and then out straight away, they think you're going to get the same amount as if you were to hold it. I disagree. What do you think, iMedic? Bob Pro, oh yeah, 25% for sure. Oh, for sure, stunting SI result of huge stress. Okay. Uh, all comes down to continual observations. Yes, it sure does. And if it's if you're putting it under, um, giving it what it wants. So in other words, organic people will start and see it more so than synthetics. So if those synthetic people have their rad programs that they're on and stick to it, it's not going to. Um, they probably won't pick it up because it just remains latent. They will just get three quarters of good results. They'll get um, enough where they're going, oh, this bud's two or three fingers wide maybe, you know, I suppose that's all right. And then that gets into their system where they just expect the norm of that size, where they should be getting four fingers to arm size wide collars in their parent plants that don't have any problems. I, I medic replied to the holding in of the smoke my medic says holding in affect the normal bronchi bronchi eye coughing forces the smaller particulate matter down to the lower bronchius so do you think that the holding in of the medical cannabis smoke is going to affect you more because you can there's also a test you can do to when you have a smoke and then blow it into a bag and then that bag will fill up and then give that to a person that doesn't smoke for instance and they get an effect off it so there is still residue left in it in other words so by holding it in more it can absorb more that's what i think i'd like to see what your medical um expression no your medical explanation yeah if you think it's something similar or if i'm on the wrong path okay my medic says holding it in allows longer duration of absorption, of course. Okay, that means you agree then, I reckon. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very good. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. Oh, yep. My medic agrees it holding it in is the longer you can and did you know too you can expand your lungs that way because um for surfing i love surfing and to do ride big waves they you know how they run around the bottom of the ocean with the rocks <laughs> or do deep water diving with uh, free diving it's you do breathing techniques and expands your lungs you can go from five liters up to six liters and you know that sort of thing uh so that might help with that too so it might be more beneficial down the track I used to have a lot of problems with, um, while we're on the vaporizing things, uh, I used to have, a, I was like, I smoked the bong for years and then um, started, I think, when I was, what, 17. And then I was on it hardcore when I was an adult, 18, from eyes open to eyes closed. And then I've developed this, <laughs> when I'd do that noise, I'd have all this mucus on my lungs. And the only way I'd get rid of that is from when I go surfing each weekend, um, I'd be paddling on my board and my bashing of my chest against the board would break it all up and I'd cough up within the first half an hour, I'd cough up these big gollies of black shit and then when I got out, I, I could breathe. <laughs> I was normal again like that and then I changed to vaporizer 10 years later or something and then found that it was just my smoking technique. So I was very happy for the vaporizer and it, I mightn't have got me to the same effect like the bong gives you a spin which i was used to where the vaporizer it was used a little bit more just a little bit more 10 or 15 percent more yeah but at least and it gave me a bit of a spin a bit of a high difference but i got used to it because i didn't like that wheezing on my lungs people think oh gosh you must smoke a packet of cigarettes a day so i don't even smoke tobacco mate it was um street it was marijuana or street weed wasn't medical cannabis back then? Definitely not. Uh, there's my little 
Aaron says, yes, it definitely has an effect, but just no need to hold it in for ages. That's what Aaron does. Oh, yeah. My medic says, you can train your lungs with pursed lip breathing, pursed lip breathing, like blowing through a straw. Ah, oh. oh, if you'd like to, if that, well, the pursed lip breathing is a technique for the mighty because you, you use a bong, you go, and you think it's gone. Um, and with the vaporizer or with the, the, my bag volcano, it's just gone because I can see it. But with a mighty, it's totally opposite. The longer and softer you, the longer and softer you smoke, the more of the heat you get. And I can blow out big giant clouds from just probably like I can suck in for maybe thirty or forty seconds, and then I just blow it, and it's just like big clouds up the room. It's so cool. Um, so that must be the pursed lip breathing technique. So if you, anybody needs to do that, they should get onto the mighty, and it'll help them. Two think, two think, two wins at once. <laughs> uh, Aaron says, where do you go surfing? Oh, mate. Northern New South Wales was the rad spot. I didn't like the Gold Coast beaches because they were um, too crowded. And I've, I'm, I'm a good surfer, so I like to go up to where there's not many people. So I'd go out and then people would start paddling out. And I didn't enjoy that. Or if I was like surfing Burley Point for once, I was out there by myself and um, I was paddling back out and I said to this fella, look at that bloke, blah, blah. He's no, no. And the fella said back to me, mate, you should watch who you're mouthing off to. We're all locals around here. And bang, it was on. <laughs> so um, I prefer just to yeah, surf in northern New South Wales is really nice when I can. I haven't done it for a while, though, unfortunately. I love surfing. I really miss it. That's why I did um, actually you're getting into my personal side sort of stuff. I'm a snowboard instructor as well. That was fun. Imedic says, yep. Uh, thor thoracic lump thumping helps break up the lung butter. <laughs> Just like someone with cystic fibrosis. External percussion helps a lot in the shower. Oh yeah. The doctor used to teach me back in the day, um, I used to have to get a towel tie it in a knot and then beat that on my back and you bait and if someone's going to do it they can bash it in a triangle form on my back and that helps relieve all that um, mucus as well good information i medic thank you i medic says too heat is always bad for your bronchioli oh okay it all depends on the relative humidity and your hydration status holy mackerel that's getting into some pretty good detail how could that be incorporated into smoking a, a vaporizer? So does that mean, because as soon as you're getting uh, the vaporizer smoke, it starts to, and you let it sit, it collects on the sides of the bag. So if you suck it you're down and it's still a little bit warm, is that not good for you type thing? Is that what I could pull out of what you're saying? So there's some vaporizers that, are hot when you breathe them in you can feel the heat is that a bad thing by medic hey look out it's nice there you go mate speaking of good people <laughs> they're doing all right mate we're struggling on <laughs> hope you're doing well too my medic vapes dry uh vapes dry uh Mucous membranes. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Sorry, mate. I couldn't pull out what you're saying on that one. And now we've got to wait another 30 seconds for the delay to go back. And then he's got to rule it right, and then I'll see it. That's how it works with this cast, this uh, String cast, what's on medic says now, which makes lung butter thicker. Oh, I think he's saying vapes are dry, mucous membranes, which makes lung butter thicker. I'm not sure about that because my, I think I put it down to the water 
in the bong that used to somehow mix something when I used to smoke and to give me the water on the or the mucus on the my lungs because I don't get it. I still smoke the two and a half pounds a year through my volcano and um, I don't get the mucus anymore. All right, iMedic says everything in lungs is based on osmotic potentials. Okay. So if it's dry, nothing can get. Oh, so the wetter it is, it's like a some gra dried grass or a mesh. So if you've got the mesh filled with water, it's going to collect things on it. Okay. That's what your lungs are, I'm picturing. Sweet. So the vapes being the vaporizers being dry, they're not going to cause that type of a wetting effect on the lungs. Oh yeah. Okay. You're starting to shed some light on the topic. Good on you, mate. Hey, what's my say? Oh, Mace says, interested to hear about terpenes. He's seen them and wants and doesn't know much about them. Um, they've got the they're all the properties that have the antimicrobials, antifungal, anti this and anti that in them. They've got they act with our body receptors to be to work really well. And they also work on microbes and other things to kill and harm them. So the more terpenes, different terpenes you get for different scenarios. Uh, like I was talking about before, D-lemonine, uh, that's a good one for uh, the cancer. And beta-caryophylline, another terpene, which is prevalent in medical cannabis, that's really good to fight pain. So there's um, ones that the correct terpene will be activate the right pathways in our bodies. And remember, we're all genetically different too, or, or similar, but we're all different things activate different people in different ways different levels of it. So you've really got to find out what works best for you. You can get a doctor and stuff saying, yeah, smoke cannabis, but what about if I smoke sativa? Oh, my hell, I'll feel like I'm angst out and I can't sit still. Oh, well, oh, because we're all different. So you've got to find out what works for you in that actual product. I've most, there's a few episodes I go listed as terpenes. I go into heavy detail about them, how to classify them and what temperature, what terpene is volatile at. So if you want to get um, beta caryophylline you put you have to get your device up to 190 no, 195 Celsius as an example for that to be active. So yeah you might like that. Or um we'll just give us a ring mate. <laughs> Good to chat to you anyway. Biomedic hard dry air like smoke is harder to remove than cooled bubble smoke. Oh, so hard dried, hard or dry air like smoke is harder to remove than cooled bubble up smoke. Ah, oh, I used to put my, um, with the bong, I used to put ice in it to cool it down. And then I had a five chambered bong where I put ice into one and then I put rice in another so I could get rid of the water vapors at the end of it but i'll tell you a funny story with that too the um i did it all set it all up and then i, I started the operation it cost me 90 95 bucks oh this is like 25 years ago so that's a lot of money well how yeah, actually it's probably longer ago than that i don't know when was 1993 <laughs> oh 30 years ago so um <laughs> sorry I'm getting old so um the funny, that's right, the five chamber thing. I put rice in the end bit, then I put the um, cooled water in another bit, then I went to the start and to use it, and all of a sudden the water transferred to the uh, the rice chamber, swelled it up and popped it. <laughs> it was made all of glass. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> got to learn by your mistakes. Uh, akin to living forest, fire versus ocean. Uh, Mace, use the fine screens in the volcano. It filters out more fine particles and better quality vapors. Oh, there's some good information. Wow. Use the fine screen. That's true. It'd clog up more, but it would still filter out more. Huh. Wow, this, I should nearly re, uh, change today, 
last half an hour has been talking about vapes. It's been good. Not usually a prob, but unless you inhale hot air. Yeah, okay. Akin to... All right. All right. Oh, exactly. Breathing cool air, it's better than hot air. Oh, yeah. Some cool chat star. Just like sitting in a wet sauna. That's why I can't, I can't stand wet saunas. Like, everyone in North America, of course, like Canada, loves them because it's freezing. But I'm raised in over here and it's flaming hot as, or down under. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of the sauna. And that's why I can't breathe in them too, because I'm not used to it. Did you know too, while we're on that, if you if the temperature gets up to 100 Fahrenheit or 37 Celsius um, and the humidity gets up to 100, that we die because it must be for that reason. The lungs are too full with water and we can't respire. So you've just, um, I met it, you've just uh, finished off the last 5% of that conversation because I knew the first bit about the temperatures and the humidity that we die at that, and that's the reason why. Good at good o. Very good. One medic says that's that causes our air is already so dry, like under thirteen percent. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yes, the dry is not fun. Oh well, hey, if there's any questions. Get them out now because um, it's been going for an hour 17. It's been some good chat on the vaporize. So, yeah, if there's any more vaporized discussions um, or things like that, it's been very good. I've been getting taught stuff too. I like it. Aaron says, go up to Cairns. It's like living in a sauna for a few months each year. Ugh. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the lemon humidity. Oh, and then going over to, um, to Canada and seeing how dry it is, and then learning about the dry cold and the sorry, the dry cold and the wet cold. It's pretty similar to the dry heat and the wet heat. Like you're saying, with the cans with the hot temperatures and the dry heat, even when it's cold and it's humid, like overnight when it's foggy in the mornings, it gets real humid up to a ninety-five percent. It's hard to breathe then. It's not fun. But when it's with the difference between the dry cold and the wet cold, uh, the dry cold is really, really nice. Like when I lived in the Yukon for a few winters and the wet cold in BC, on southern BC, um, it has a lot of wet snow on it and it's not real fun. It's like the wet snow is real. It just, it's like with the dry cold, you can roll in the snow and it, absorbs all of the mud off your boots. So before you used to work, work in the, walk in the house or into your Arctic entry, you'd walk in the snow and all of your boots are clean and um, <laughs> you take your shoes off, your boots off. It's great. I miss the snow. I like all those cool folk in the snow. I envy you. Uh, Omenic says, vape your concentrates at as cool as possible. Heat stress is high for your mucous membranes. Ah, if you, I mean, it goes and say, if you can vape or dab in cold outside, it totally helps with bronchial swelling. Oh, that's a good one. Holy mackerel. I used to love, you know, um, when it was winter in the Yukon, I'd, Used to go outside and I used to like smoking out there. I'd even roll a joint and go out. And I used to love blowing up and watching all of the ice crystals, all my breath freeze and fall down as ice crystals. <laughs> that used to be fun as. Because through the day there, it was uh, minus 20 Celsius in the day. So I, I love that. You know, if you, the true, the temperature, if it's too cold, you have the wrong clothes on. But if it's too hot, what can you do? Because I learnt that in Canada. They, they said that. It's too cold. You got Because I said, oh, I'm so freezing. They said, well, you're not dressed properly. You haven't got your, you know, your, your th thermals. And then, oh, I'm not going to go through the thing. But um, it was, yeah, just three thin layers. And you can, I was snowboarding at minus 32. Really, really well. Warm as. 
Anyway, enough about me. May says, yes, oh, that's right. So the cold helps with bronchial swelling. So if you get chest infections or things like that, or chest inflammation, or what's it called? Yeah, inflammation, you might um, want to do it when it's colder. Have your little, build a little cold room, keep it cold to five degrees Celsius, go and put your butcher's um, your jacket on, go in there and have your sesh, come back out. That's Iometic's health way. Good on your Iometic. Storks, I should, Storks, May says, Storks and Bickle have released the new Venti handheld portable. Ooh, that sounds all right. Venti, I've never tried a Venti. They've got, I've only tried the, and Venti's are cheaper than the Mighty as well. Well, let's have to keep us updated on that one, mate. It sounds good. Yeah, how much? What do they reckon? Mace hasn't tested the Venti as yet. Yes. Yeah, I wonder. Actually, though, I saw, I tried the little, they remind me of a pigtail, a pig's tail, because they're, the whip thing, it used to look like a little pig's tail. <laughs> and I remember this fella uh, in Canada, he was smoking on it, and he used to swear by it. He loved it. He was, and that was his at-home device too. Uh, totally. Oh, yeah. Always smoke in human, always smoke in human environment. I think it's the opposite. You should always try and smoke in a in a non-human environment. I think it was he was trying on to the thing that I said at the time. Yeah. Absolutely. The cold air is best. Oh yeah. And it feels nice in the lungs too. Colder air. I don't know if it does something different, but when I breathe in cold air, like in the Yukon, for instance, you, it was just really nice. Couldn't do it for long. Like you have to watch when it was below minus 25 because, you know, frostbite can happen soon. I got frostbite too on one of my fingers. <laughs> yeah, lucky for me. It only went through two layers, so I didn't have to get it amputated, the doctor said. <laughs> Good fun. Oh, yeah, Mace's got a price for that. Uh, the Venti hand-held portable, 745 bucks. Holy mackerel. What? That's Australian dollars. Wow. That's the price. But, all right, here's, here's our uh, my volcano price. It's lasted me for 10 years and hasn't broken. I paid, um, well, now they're worth a grand, say. So over the 10 years, that's 100 bucks a year for smoking out of a really good device. And it saves me a bit in the cannabis because it's, it's efficient in the sense that it Remember that study I brought up before with the five vaporizers that shows how efficient they all are and what gets stuck in their device, their, their whips and their bags and their chambers and how much vapor it actually produces. So that was really cool to see. So the difference, like if you buy one of those cheaper ones that was on that list, you're only going to get 25% less vapor. And if you weigh that up with medical terms on how much your cannabis is, uh, medical cannabis, it's... That's a heap of dollars. So the initial outlay mightn't be as much if you weigh it up over a long period. And for someone like me, who's a eyes open to eyes, eyes closed smoker, uh, my device has got to be really reliable and maintenance has got to be low on it because I use it so much. Uh, medic says cold air constricts the vessels of the lungs, hence less congestion and mucus. Cold air. Constricts. Oh wow! Jeez. So they could maybe in the in the future they could put a chiller onto it or some sort of cooling device, and that would assist. I wonder if that would help with absorption, if it's cooler, and hence less con congestion and mucus. Cold air constricts the vessels. Oh, if it constricts them, that means it's making it smaller, so it mightn't be as absorbent. I don't know. I'm getting too technical. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Iometics writing's rad information. Oh, and he goes on to say then, and easier reflux or expulsion of lung butter. So cold air constricts the vessels of the lungs, hence less congestion and mucus, and easier 
reflux or expulsion of lung butter. Ah. Aaron says, yeah, my new X-Vape Fog Pro is 180. It's the best I've ever used. Yeah, Aaron, that's the way. If it's working for you, mate, that's an awesome device. Nice work. May says, Volcano Digital Hybrid is still the best that he finds of home units, and they're not portable. The best quality vape available, yeah. Yep, the Volcano Digital Hybrid. The difference between the Volcano Medic and the Volcano Digital is the temperature and the mouthpiece. Oh, and of course, it's touchscreen, the Volcano Medic. But yeah, the, they've stopped the temperatures now going up to 230 degrees Celsius. Uh, they've stopped them at, at 210 now. So the Mighty Plus and the Volcano Medic 2, it goes up to 210. And I find, I found, well, I've went through when I did that talk on the terpenes that when it's 220 odd is when benzene starts becoming a vapor. So you start to administer all those harmful things as well. So that might be why they've reduced the temperature to 210. Omedic says that's why we take little kiddos with respiratory issues out into the cold. Wow. Huh. So there's probably a lot of that in Australia because it's hot. <laughs> so they just need a bit of coolness. Gee, that's pretty good. You should be Dr. Imatic. <laughs> and he says, for RSV and other known unknown respiratory disorders, they take them to the cold too. Wow. That's good. Good on you, mate. Thank you for your nice medical input. Aaron says it would want to be the best for a thousand. Yeah, I know. For a thousand. It is. What I'd do, well, if my house was destroyed and I had to start again, I just think I'd just have to get one. It'd just have to be on the on the list because of the reliability factor, I suppose. I'd be getting another one and it would be it would break soon. I'd have to do parts on, on it, replace parts or something. I'd be let down. And that's only from personal experience because that's what I've I've been using it now for uh, just over ten years, ten and a half years, the vaporite the volcano. But it's all depends what works for you too. If you've like uh, Aaron's got that hundred the X Vape Pro and says it's the best. So that's stick to that. Um yeah, I've been spoiled, unfortunately, so that's why I'd have to do, have to replace it if I lost one. May says they're not cheap at a thousand, but it's his favourite daily activity. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I dead set agree. I look forward to it. Even when I'm eating, I sort of shovel my food down, thinking, "New beauty! I can't wait to smoke after this." It um, it never disappoints me. I'm constantly stoked afterwards. It's um, one of my best friends is my volcano. Uh, yeah. If I if I'm not in co in co my company of my volcano, I get very upset and disappointed. <laughs> so I agree. It's <laughs> yep. I medic says, are you coming back onto Fumi's channel anytime soon? Um, I said to Fumi last semester I'd come back on before my last semester's ex, ex, um, uni started up. And now I've finished again. I finished uh, four weeks ago. I've done my exams. And the uni doesn't start till the end of January. So I have got some time. So, yes, I would like to go back and say good day to Fumi. Um, I, write, I write to him every now and then in a chat thing, a personal message. Uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, I... Yes, mate. Um, Aaron says, I definitely love to have a go on a volcano, also a mighty to try it for. The problem is, though, mate, if you have a go at that, you'd probably go, oh, look, my what I'm using isn't the best. 
but what you're using now is really, really the best for you. You found it to be cool. So maybe wait. Actually, I'm not going to. You, you might just like it too much, that's all. Um, but if I was going to change devices or if I had a health problem or something like that and I was looking for something new, then I'd like to try it because then I'd go, wow, I've compared this to other things and these are the differences. And who knows, the differences mightn't be that much for you. But for, yeah, I love mine. So little much. Nice, you should pop in. I'm only in occasionally, same as oh, yeah, Candy. Oh, I can't really say much on that one. Uh, agreed, my volcano. I just, the, no, I'm not even going to say it. I don't like to talk to other people. Agreed, my volcano has created many smiles, says Mace. Yeah, it's so cool. And you sit around with it, you, you got a few mouthpieces and you got mates over and you just throw them a few mouthpieces. They're having fun time. You know, their body's feeling non-relaxed and non-stressed and non-anxious and all that sort of stuff now. It's um, it's really cool. It's it's such an asset. The only negative thing is I think you do use it a little bit more in the volcano, but I can put that into my you know smoking budget. It's just what I have to do to get happiness in, in my life or calmness. It's and it does more than what those studies that suggested before. You know, like it helps with sleep. It helps with my relaxation. It helps with my thinking. I'm too. There's too many things going through my brain. It helps with stress because um, it stops me. You know, no one likes hearing about me. It's a lot of things that it helps with that they didn't put into that study. Ozzy Jeffro says, I appreciate your timing today. Informative and helpful. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Ozzy Jeffro. I hope you have a good day too, mate. Nice to see you. Oh, yep. Yeah. Agreed. Thanks for the nice words, guys and girls. Aaron says, it is because I can't plug in a volcano. Ah, well, I'll come back to that. Iometic sounds like I need a volcano. Oh, well, not if you're a connoisseur, you must need it because if you're into terpenes and into flavors and that sort of stuff, mate, it's, it's next level. It's the best way to put it. Smoking joints and all these other things, like when you roll a joint and you, you you don't light it yet, you start breathing in, you get this lovely taste. The hit of the volcano gives you that taste whilst it's lit. And then you can do terpene profiles on, like, for instance, if I smell a bud when it's growing, I expect that to be exhaled out of my mouth when I'm smoking. That's my standard. So my post-operation harvest and post-operation procedures must be in practice to obtain that. I only get that 30% of the time because it's very hard. I find it hard. I can go, I just find it hard. Um, but smoking different cultivars, you can see different tastes, which you know are different terpenes. So that's the other medicinal side of it. And having a higher terpene profile, uh, around 5% dried, is humongous. And 5% is where you open up the, the jar or whatever and the, in a car park and someone down the end of the car park runs over to you and with joy. It just reeks. But in Australia, uh, post-harvest practices aren't or could be improved so they aren't as smelly as they could be. And then the medicinal stuff you get in Australia, you crack one of those jars open and it doesn't bloody smell, mate. That means they're all gone. So the volcano, it, all it does then is it picks up on the dryness because it's too dry. So my back of my throat hurts, not all the time, but just certain ones because they haven't stored it and haven't done the right procedures. So that's a negative thing. So it can go back against you, I suppose, I lost where I was talking to you. Just how good a volcano are is for the terpene profile. Yeah, it's rad. And it lasts a little bit longer, I have to say. So I a volcano, it might get me like three hours where a joint might last two and a half or something. Like it has a smidgen more legs on it. And then if I was going to go out for a duration, 
I'll just put it a little bit extra fuller and it'll last a little bit extra longer. Uh, so yeah, I really love the volcano, mate. My medic says I'm always too skinny. But uh, the volcano just gives you that fog. You're just sitting in the fog all day. It's lovely. <laughs> and, there's, you know, you're thinking of one thought pattern, not 20, not of all of the stresses and the money that you've got to pay and all these problems. It's just locked into, oh, okay, now I can function. <laughs> That's what it does for me. iMedic's 12-volt power supply, like a small battery always on. Oh, that's right. Aaron says it can't plug in. I can't plug in a volcano. Why, Aaron? Actually, do you smoke in your car or something, or what? Because you can, if you, for instance, if it's your car, you can get an inverter, plugs into your cigarette lighter. Uh, that's. I think they're rated at 150 watts. Hang on. Uh, 270 watts. That's the new. That's the volcano medic two. So yeah, you got those 300 watt inverter, it would run it, for instance. So try and get back to us, because I'm a licensed electrician too. So I can help you probably very good with electrical stuff. Uh, I'm, medic. I'm into the turret profiles for sure. Hey, connoisseur, mate, brother. That's the way. Well, looks like you're going to have to save, my friend, and then come back on and just go, wow. <laughs> Mace, say goodbye to bong lungs when you convert to the volcano. Yeah, you must have missed it earlier, mate. And I was going on about that. That's exactly right. I'm smooth as now. It's great. My medic, grandma on cultivar, Amy Aces cross white widow. Hey, that's the way. You can smell it for miles. That's the way, mate. Yes. Um, yeah, well, for that then, yeah, if you get your volcano and you, the same taste that you grow it at when it smells at day 50, you'd expect when you're blowing it out of your volcano at a slightly reduced strength, like a cordial, we call it in Australia. Like if you're making a juice box up in the States, um, you put in that high strength stuff, the cordial, and then you dilute it. That's kind of what the terpene profile would be. If it's on the plant, you'd rub it and it's at 100%. And when you through the volcano, you might get it at about 30% of that smelling strength. But it's still strong as, and you blow it out and you, you lick your lip afterwards and, oh, it's just delicious. And that's what helps me with um, choosing cultivars. I might have, you know, a few half dozen cultivars to choose from. Cool. Oh, I feel like getting this now. I want that licorice taste. All right, I might have that pink DV version of licorice. I might have the orange, what's that? The pine, pineapple death bubba, which is like a, a sherbet, a orange sherbet. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it really helps with, um, in that sense. Sounds like you've got the goodness too, mate. You'd love it. Yep, inverter. John 420, how you going, John 420? Tiny mite hits harder than the volcano. The tiny mite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the, the amount of length and time that you, you, you're sucking in. We were speaking about that earlier, and that's pretty cool. That's what my theory is anyway, because you the volcano, you sort of breathe it in for two or three seconds, everything's in your lungs. But the mighty, you're, you're sucking in slowly, and it's going deeper and deeper, and you're doing that for 30 seconds. I'd, uh but yeah, I agree. You get some. I get some really rad hits out of the mighty too. John, sounds like you got one too, mate. If anyone doesn't, I just made a video on the mighty. If you want to watch one, I talk actually. Oh yeah, for mace, I talk about the look at that mighty video that summarizes the terpenes profiles, mate. You don't have to watch a whole show unless you want. It. I really go into great detail about the isoprene levels and what they are, how to classify them. But if you just want the general knowledge. Go back and look at the Mighty video that I made uh, a few weeks ago. I put all the terpene profiles into that and say about the temperatures. I showed you charts on which terpenes are released at different temperatures for reference. Yeah. Less lung butter. Yes. Ugh. That's terrible, that lung stuff, isn't it? 
I nearly would like to uh, put it in a microscope. It was horrible looking. Black, chunky tar. I haven't seen that for uh, decades, I reckon. Tiny mite. Yes, the tiny mite of the mighty. <laughs> it's really good. This has been uh, enjoyable, I have to say. Thanks today. Thanks for all the people in chat today. So, um, I'm learning stuff and more efficient smoking and safer smoking practices. It's been really good. And for people like me at the moment in hot ass Australia or when it is hot, um, yeah, there's the smoking when it's cooler will better help our lungs. So if someone's smoking when it's really hot outside above 30, 35 or something, 40 Celsius, they should consider going inside into the air conditioning to smoke and it would give them a better smoking effect because they wouldn't get any inflammation on their lungs. That's what I learned today from uh, iMedics input. It's pretty cool. So, Mozzie, good to see you. Yes, mate. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll go on to Fumi's uh, soon. It's, it's always in the back of my mind because I, I, I say what I do. I just haven't booked in time or a date or anything, or he hasn't booked in anything for me. He hasn't, uh, yeah. Because I've got a lot of slides now. It'd be good to nearly, I said to him, just have a show for me even. And I'll just share all my slides and weird questions. <laughs> he didn't reply. But I'll still go on and say good day, though. Awesome. Good to see you. Thank you, mate. Yes, cold air is better. Yeah, that's good. So it's, yeah, that's a massive bonus for Australians. Because it's always hot here. That's what I mean for that reason. Like in Northern Hemisphere, isn't as hot. Actually, I shouldn't say that. That's where the hottest place in the world is, I think, isn't it? 58 Celsius or something in Death Valley. Is that? Or, anyway, my medic, all good when every time permits. Yes, medical cannabis is always good in my eyes. Eyes open till eyes closed for me. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to show what are we talking about next week? Which I'll give you a squeeze. Uh, oh, I didn't have it ready. Great. Here it is. Open topic. Nothing. I got the driving thing to show again. I made up a slide for it. A slide for next week's. So I've prepared actually quite a few of the next week's ones. Look at that, the governor of Victoria in front of medical cannabis. That's cool, eh? Look at him. <laughs> Some good stuff. I like that one too. Um, that's next week. And then I've prepared actually the quite a few weeks after that. To get ready for Christmas, so the, and the week after that is going to be blooming awesome. Um, the future of, actually, should say cannabis, the future of medical cannabis. Oh, I didn't put that in the title. I'd probably call it the future of plants because of blooming YouTube. It's amazing. But anyway, the future of medical cannabis and artificial intelligence. That's I'm preparing slides for that now. If that's in two weeks' time, and the week after that's Christmas. The week after that's New Year's Eve. So that's all ready for this year. I'm we'll to start next year's soon. That's what I'm ready for. So I'm just trying to get it all prepared. Stay a bit ahead of myself. So it's, yeah, all's good. My medic says, even if you put your face in a freezer and breathe. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. So if your lungs are ever feeling a bit tight, yeah, grab some freezer air. It's pretty cool. So for that, oh, I should not say that one. <laughs> uh, Iomedix says photo op. Yes, yeah. Why not? It's going to be legal soon in oh in years to come, but eventually it will. I'm not, I don't like talking about that. What a good chart was today. Medical cannabis for good health. Fantastic. Well, I've learnt today from 
out of, I pull out of today's show is oh, the disinfectants. And that's how I'm going to change my practices now. Did you know if you're chopping up bud with HLDV virus in it, the viroids can be on the outsides of the buds or they'll get on your chopping devices? So then if you touch that on any plants, bang, you've just vectored it across and introduced it to your genetic line. So the in dispensaries, they sell HLDV bud. In Australia, we're probably our medical cannabis would be getting HLDV bud. Um, so all these practices have to really be adhered to if you do want to spread it within your garden. So um, the thing I pulled out from today is my scissors and I've made up some new bottles. I only used to have an ISO bottle, which uh, I have metho, 70%, 30% water. Now I've got a bleach bottle uh, with 10% in that. And I'm going to get some dried milk powder and add it to a bleach solution and have that. So I'll probably just spray that second one, the bleach solution, 10% bleach Clorox with uh, the 20% dried fat, no, dry powder, non-fat. That's what it said. So having those in spray bottles, whenever you're finished or whenever you're going to change something, you can just spray it. Or if you touch the butt on your hands, just quick spray in the sink, something like that. Just adopt some practice to stop the spread of it. Because from working with it for the last 12 months, HLDV is the winner. Uh, you can still get results out of it. I mean, you can still get a, a yield. Uh, healthy plants will still live but you're not going to get your performance. You're under par massively from performance. So if you were to replace those genetics, you'd find you'd be getting an extra 30% on your yield uh, minimum, where some plants that have poor immune systems, they don't even last to the day 60. They just die, even though you're doing the whole right thing. It's so important, this HLD. It's the next COVID of the cannabis industry. That's what I said to old mate last week on his show you should go and call it that because it's it's really really bad uh oh nice i'll be waiting for those aussie there you go sorry i don't know what that was doing it. nice excellent cross contamination yes that's exactly right we have to try and eliminate it in our own gardens and for australia because far out even on the outside of seed coats so if you get seeds from overseas there's a chance if that had it and was prevalent in it, it might have expressed on the outside of the seed coats because that's come back from the studies too. Not only on the outsides of buds or in buds, when you chop it, it'll be on the outsides of seeds. It's just, it's scary is the best way to it. If you've had a spider mite infection or in, um, spider mites in your garden, you'll stress. Imagine getting a virus you can't eliminate and it stays dormant or latent until it's under a stress condition it's mega bad and then you're real proud of your genetics you might share it with friends bang you've just gone and um infected all of theirs as well so the yeah the new genetic thing like from last week's show would be to have a quarantine tent so you first grow it there stress it out a lot see if you get any signs of it but anyway, I'm talking about today's show. So that's the thing I've put out to today's show was the disinfectants. So now for probably, for now I'll probably just be in my, I think in my practices, it'll, um, until I can get things tested. There's a few portable HLDV testers you can get now, but they need to be their handheld um, PLC machines, but they're, um, they got to be stored properly in cold conditions and things like that because they're temperature sensitive, temperature sensitive. Uh, biosensors, not biosensors, the sensors that are in them. Uh, Biomedics says virus is the enemy, yes. And what's another thing? Oh, hence to peroxide treatment for all seeds outside your grow. It might even help with stratification. Uh, I don't know about stratification, but yeah, it'll definitely help with the, the treatment for sure. And then also peroxide is a, it helps with germination because it's acts as amylase when it reacts with water which is an enzyme that is needed in germination oh, or scarification oh yeah that's what it yeah scarification is when you uh, have to help with breaking dormancy and you 
manually, you, you like you scratch it or you open it, open the seed. Another thing from today I picked up was the smoking. So if there's anything, any chest infections or any swollen things from the, your chest, try and have your seshs. If you constantly do it in heat conditions, try and do it in air conditioning. That's something I picked up from today too, which is very important because it's all about medicine and improving the body, not um, taking something that doesn't improve it, like big pharma wants, because they want us to take all their stuff because it causes, it helps all their jobs, because it's money driven, but it gives us all the side effects. But our green leaf material, trichomes and terpenes, flavonoids, ah, oh, it's so little, so little, it's not funny. What, what just because when you're not on it, you get a bit grumpy, I get, but I'm always on it, so, um. There's never a drama. It mightn't be at the, at the amount that I want because I'm on rations, but enough about me. <laughs> it's been a great show today. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks to those few people that have come and helped too. Cool folk that have come through and written in chat. Excellent work. I really, really enjoyed it today. Um, I feel some good things come out of it. Fantastic. Righto. Well, I'm going to do the same again next week. And I hope to see you as other all use cool people and more next week uh i appreciate it lots that's great i'm gonna go and yes have some volcano fun now <laughs> uh thanks again everybody happy breeding happy growing and good health to you all bye bye thank you for listening <laughs>